Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, we could really use your help. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named the Two Opinionated Podcast one of its top 100 podcasts. This is a monumental feat for this program. You know, we're a father and son team out of a small town in West Virginia, have been doing this for about five years. There's 15 million podcasts out there. About 40,000 of those get to the point that they're listed on IMDb. Out of those 40,000 out of the 15 million, we are ranked number 82. Something that we're just immensely proud of. We're so thankful for our listeners, our watchers, our fans. Thank you so, so much. If you would like to help us out and we're asking for it, please. Um, it's easy. It's real, it, it's really easy. It's free. If you go to IMDB, that's IMDB.com, look up two opinionated podcasts and just take a look at the page. That's all you have to do. I mean, you're welcome to look at the cast, look at the episodes so you can kind of see who's been on the program. Do whatever you want, but even just bringing up the page, imdb.com, Two Opinionated Podcast, bring up the page, look at it. That helps us so much. So please, if you can do anything, we would really appreciate that. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Love to have your subscription there. It's also free. And you can also check out our website, MeisterCon.com, where you'll find almost 700 episodes, audio and video, available on there. There's also a terrific blog from Brett, and it'll let you know anything that we have going on in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location, anything that we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much much. I, I can't express enough how appreciative we are of all of you. We never, never expected to, to do as well as, as we have, and that's all because of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy that interview. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Whoa. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. Got Ezra Buzzington with me, so welcome, Ezra. How's it going, everybody? I hear the applause muted in the background. How you doing? <laughs> You'd hear it if I didn't hit mute. That's that's the only reason. Oh, is that right? Would I? All right. Good to know. That's right. Now, Ezra, welcome to the, the program. I'm so excited to talk with you. Our our mutual friend, Lisa Hamill, helped set this up, and I'm very grateful uh, to her because I was just rambling on about actors that I wanted to talk with. And she's like, I know Ezra. <laughs> <laughs> she does. So she, we've known each other like 20 years, I think. But, but by the way, her full name is actually the divine Lisa Hamill. So when yes. you talk to her, I would recommend you do that or her lawyers might get in touch. That's with right. You. That's right. She gets very touchy. She's very touchy. She's worked her. hard for that title. She's kind of like, uh, you know, Sir Patrick. <laughs> exactly. Fine, Lisa. <laughs> she's been knighted by the queen. <laughs> So she's the divine Lisa Hamill, but she is actually, she's divine. She's one of my best friends. Yeah, she's, she, yeah, she's absolutely. And just the nicest person. Oh my God. You, uh, yeah. Uh, to, to use a foul phrase my mother always used, she wouldn't say shit if she had a mouthful. That's true. That's exactly <laughs> right. I mean, she does a lot of casting for different oh, she's things. Great too. She's and, great. and like, if I was an actor and I'm not, but if I was, mm. I'd love to have Lisa as a, a casting agent because she like legit remembers, you know, like it, even if she doesn't cast you for this project, she's mm -hmm. going to remember you. And if something comes up that she thinks is a fit, she'll reach out and call you. I thought that's terrific. That's true. And her superpower is putting it somehow in that massive brain of hers back in some file. Now I do the same thing, but I can't access it. She can access yeah, it. Yeah, well, she can access it's it. like, oh, who, who was that young actress in 1979 who appeared in some Robert De Niro movie that everybody has and should come up with a name like that? And you're like, yeah, nah, you're scary. That's why she's divine. Yeah, she's pretty great. She's pretty great. So, so Ezra, let's talk this way. Tell right. me a little bit about what got you into the entertainment business. Oh, right. I, was, I, mean, I was, yeah, I was born into it. Um, here's a picture, actually. Let me pull it down and I'll show you. This is just chance. It's always in my office. This is my grandfather. Oh, yeah. My namesake. His uh, stage name was Ezra Buzzington, and he did vaudeville. 
in like the Midwestern circuit. And you can find pictures of online Ezra Buzzington. He was from Indiana. So it was Ezra Buzzington and the Hoosier Hotshots. He was like a, <laughs> he, a, a sort of an old rube band leader. So he'd black out a tooth and put on sort of straw hair and a stupid hat and play the banjo and then tell jokes and introduce acts. So that was his vaudeville, vaudeville act. He did really, really well for a number of years. Sadly, his act, I want to say around 1926, 27, he was doing a lot of radio. And his character, Ezra Buzzington, was, the story goes, stolen from him oh. by yeah, a well-known DJ out of Chicago uh, who ended up co-opting the character. And my grandfather was, well, he also had a farm. She so was getting a little tired of him, so he just let it go. He didn't even. Why you know. would you do that? Why not just choose a different name? Have you ever been to Hollywood? Well, fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did it, actually. He, he called himself Uncle Ezra. So that's that's but that's where he got it was from my grandfather and grandpa just kind of gave it up at that point. But my mom uh, uh, is my maternal grandfather. So my mother went on to perform on various stages around Indiana and she taught uh, drama and theater. So yeah. I was, my brother and the sister and I were born into it. I was really. going to say you were really born into it. Pretty much. My first audition was at age nine uh, for the music man at Muncie, Indiana, Muncie Civic Theater. And I auditioned for the role of Winthrop and did not book it. And there started a trend that would stay with me the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, though, because she actually, it was so funny. My mother was crazy. She wasn't a stage mom. She just wanted us all to have fun. But she died. I just, I, I've just finished my memoirs and I have a whole chapter about this. She dyed my hair red like uh ron howard had been in the movie with robert <laughs> preston for the world she dyed my hair red didn't tell me she was gonna do it she just took me to this place and my hair was red and i went okay whatever and i went and sang the song at at uh a muncie civic on the day of auditions and totally blew it i totally blew it. i blew it so hard i remember it vividly i couldn't get my voice out what did come out was really shaky like <laughs> Nervous. And I was so sad. And you could see all the other stage mothers in the audience just kind of go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> my, my boys got this part. It was hilarious. But since then, honestly, I've been doing performing in various capacities far better than I did when I was nine. But I can still sing. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically the story. So I'm the only one that followed went into it completely. Yeah. My brother and my sister, my brother stayed in Muncie and he works for the city and got married with the family. My sister uh, married our stepbrother and moved to Colorado and had children. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Did, have you ever went back and tried to recreate the vaudeville act? Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard, but vaudeville's dead, man. Well, it is, but I'm sure you <laughs> can find somebody to let you do that. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe. Oh, I've never I'm never mind your but in 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 the culture these days in our country, the theater really has taken even a harder hit than film and television taken recently. I mean, yeah. theater, especially with COVID, you know, that certainly didn't help. COVID uh, did not help. It, it pretty much destroyed the theater community for a while. And because that's a live event, you know, and people are singing, they're spraying their yeah. shit all over you. So that pretty much shut it down for a long time. But interestingly enough, when I was in New York City, um, Edgar Lansbury was a major producer on Broadway at the time and he's actually the brother of angela lansbury the performer. i was gonna ask if they were related oh, yeah, yeah brother and sister and uh he had tried i forget when this was it was like around the, the 30s or something 1930s and i was there because i'm that old i was <laughs> not really that's a lie but it was a few, number of years ago and he wanted to revive vaudeville and he was going the concept of vaudeville with variety yeah. act and what have you so they put out a call for anybody coming to do whatever fuck it is they wanted to do and he, it was going to star, what were their names? They were a couple, a man and a woman, and they did mime. Shields and Yardell, that's their I don't name. know about Shields that. Yeah, 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 look them up, you'll see them. It's like, they lasted about a minute and a half. But he was going to um, star them. They were going to headline it. So fine, so I thought, well, I can do that. And so I came up with a song. It was actually written by Charlie Chaplin called Smile. Smile, though your heart is aching. Yeah, yeah that. Charlie Chaplin wrote that. And so I told. I didn't realize he wrote that, but yeah, 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 that that song. Song. yeah. and yeah, it's it's a sweet, beautiful song. It's one one of my audition songs. Anyway, I went up to the accompanist on this big Broadway stage. It was so great. It was just so great. I was like twenty years on it. Went up to the accompanist and said, "Okay, here's the song I'm going to sing, and when I say these words, <laughs> that's when you do the crescendo when I come in and I start singing." 
So I walked out, I introduced myself onto the stage. I gave him the music, I introduced myself. Hi, I'm Ezra Buzzington. And my, just so you know, my grandfather was in vaudeville. And then I started talking about it and I sit on the edge of the stage, just like Judy Garland always, it's so stupid. So on the edge of the stage. And I went on a little story about grandpa and how he died before I was born, but now he's my angel and he guides me and blah, blah, blah. And I said, I just want you to know that he now knows that vaudeville isn't dead. It was merely sleeping. Music comes in, I sing Smile. When I'm done, <clears throat> the producer, who's back probably about 15, 20 rows, Edgar Lansbury comes running down the aisle. I shake him <laughs> out. I was like, who's that old man coming at me? He came running down the aisle. He put his hand out and we introduced ourselves. And he goes, I have to tell you something. I said, what? And he goes, there's nothing for you in this show. <laughs> and I went, thank you? And he's like, but. I have to know who you are and I want us to get together and we'll talk. And literally like in two days, I was going to be leaving town to go to Rock Island, Illinois to perform for the summer in a show. And so I was already booked. And I told him, I said, he said, well, call me when you get back. Being 21 thinking or so thinking that, you know, oh, these opportunities come all along. That's right. Fine, blah, blah, blah. I didn't, I never called him. Wasn't that stupid? Yeah, that probably wasn't smart. But that was grandpa, you know, that that was my grandfather. And that's my history, as you asked. And since we brought up vaudeville, I had to tell that story. That, that's a great story. Had, have you run into or did you run into him after that at some point? Never did. No, never did. Wow. It's a missed opportunity that I still think about, actually. I know. I wonder it'll what be in the second half. It. It'll be in the second half of my memoir. Yeah, it's not too late. Yeah. Uh, to what? Contact Edgar Lansbury? That well, means, to, that to, means to get back to vaudeville. Yeah. Might be a little late to contact him. Well, there's that. Plus, honestly, I, I had a dream of working on Broadway for years and years and years. And, and now I have a dear friend who's been on Broadway like six times. She's a chorus girl. She's just, well, not chorus girl. I mean, she's a, a Corrine. She she yeah. went back to Broadway and she's worked six shows. She was in Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, yeah, and Good awesome. Girl, and all sorts of shows. And Jerome Robbins Broadway, she's a dancer. And we talked about it when she was living here directly below me, actually, for a while. We did a show together in Pasadena and we became fast friends. Now she's back on the East Coast. And we talked and I asked her, I said, well, what actually to get paid? Because <laughs> I never really even looked it up. Yeah. It's not a lot of fucking money. No. It's just not. No. I mean, I can get what they're getting a week. I get in a day on a set. Yeah, so it's not going to you're, you're going to have a hard time making a living just on that income. Exactly. And and you're living in New York City. And right. I've got, you know, eight shows a week. I'm an old man. <laughs> There's no freaking way I can do that, man. I could do four, maybe. But, you know, I'd rather I'd rather be in L.A. and work in film and TV. We're also, honestly, there, even though my background is theater and it's my first God, my second God is this. Yeah. And it's it's. There's a history to this. Like you can find me on Zoom, you can, or not on Zoom. You can find me on YouTube. You can find me on various places that will live forever and ever and ever. And that kind of matters to me a little bit. Yeah, there's a larger sense of history with film and TV, I think, than there even is with theater. Even well, I though, get that. Yeah, yeah, because it is. You do you do something like that, and it's forever, basically. And that's one of the reasons I started because I wanted my mom, who I'd not lived with for a number of years, to be able to see my work. And so she could, before she dies, she could see it all. So that was oh, pretty cool. Of course, she was just as critical as she had ever been. <laughs> well, that's just... Oh, awesome. honey, it looks like you've gained a few pounds, honey. Have you thought... <laughs> She's the best. I used to have a uh, relative that would... Uh, her What she would say every literally every time she saw me was, Oh, you look like you're eating well. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good that's very nice yeah that's, that's I was like, yes i am <laughs> and is she, is she, I'm, i gotta ask is she southern she's very southern yeah that's what i thought <laughs> just a little, little passive aggression going a little on. passive aggressive although not entirely you know uh it, without the or within the realm of possibility that she was actually meaning it as a compliment Oh, probably. You were probably. too skinny last time I saw you, but it looks like you're eating well now. You got a little bit of both. You got a little bit of both. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. <laughs> but I'm guessing the passive aggressive was probably behind. More. Well, it's kind of in the blood, honestly. We have enough of that in Indiana. We're not even that southern, so but we still had the influence of it. I mean, I recognize it when I see it. So, yeah. a difference of mine here in town are both from the south, and I can hear it in them, boy, every time yeah. I miss them. I'm like, I miss this. We uh, in West Virginia, we will say something like, 
I'm going to sit in the floor. So I'm I'll not going to sit on the floor. I'm going to sit in the floor. Uh-huh. So that's I cool. I've never heard that one, actually. Yeah. Here's a question for you. How do you say the word C-O-L-O-R? <laughs> so, okay. So I say <laughs> collars. Of course you do. Um, with that. But yeah, I have definitely, you know, heard you're saying that incorrectly, you know, because I'll say, yeah. uh, let's say uh, uh, collar or uh, collar, you know, like a collar. Yeah, a collar around your shirt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that shirt is a pretty collar. Yeah. Which is how I grew up saying it. But then when I started, you know, performing, I said, the other directors would tell me it's not color, it's color. Yeah. What color is that? It's blue. Not what color is that? It's, you know, it's <laughs> which is interesting. Another one that you'll, you'll probably know immediately. You might have to write it down. It's spelled, and it's a question, two words. It's J E E T. Okay. C H E T. Question mark. Write it down. Do you know what it no, is? No, it's, it's, let's see, J E. T T. No, J E E T. Oh, J E E T. C H E T. Oh, you'll have to say that one for me. With a question, just say it out loud. So it's it's G Chet, Jet Chet, G Chet. You hungry, G Chet? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> ain't that the truth though? That's, that's G- exactly right. Yeah. G-J-T. And once you hear it, you can never not hear it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Know, well, yeah, you're exactly right. I say that all the time. Oh, of course we all do. G chat. I love that one. I do too. Yeah, actually, I'm so glad I grew up in an area with mixed dialects. Uh, because Indiana's sort of a crossbreed of a lot of different stuff. Yeah. It has its own style. I mean, everybody talks through their nose like this. Everybody just right, right in there. That's the placement right there. No question about it, which is why I'm a good tenor. <laughs> when I sing, but I had to overcome that, of course, as an actor. You could, you're very limited, you know, unless you want to be like, you know, just working in Westerns the rest of your life. Well, yeah, because I don't really detect that Southern. No, wow. there's not. There, there's something called, well, it comes out every now and then, and I can tap it like Probably that. Probably when you're talking with family. Oh, always. Every, yeah. every single time. Every single And you, for that. <laughs> I can yeah, hear well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but any, anytime I talk with somebody from here, I get, oh, get yeah, much right. thicker. Oh, it gets 10 times, 10 times that, you know, it's like, and I, I'm glad I can fall right into it because, because it allows me the ability to do several different dialects of yeah. the South and the Midwest. And it's just like right there. There's no question. It's automatic. All I have to do if I mess up is I, if I don't understand a line, I'll call my brother and say, please say this line for me. <laughs> and he'll say, it. it's like, nah, okay, got it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm plus, I'm glad I grew up in the Midwest because at least in Indiana, there was of a connect to the earth, a connectedness to the actual earth, the dirt, the uh, 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 land that one doesn't get in a city. I mean, I couldn't wait to get out. When I was 17, I moved to Chicago, you know, and then I went back to Indiana for about a year and a half, and then I moved on to New York City. Um, because it's, for me, it's incredibly limited. You know, I'm not somebody who wants a big family. I'm not somebody who wants a nine to five job. I'm not right. somebody who wants just security and safety and the, and knowledge of everything around me at all times. I don't want to know everybody. And I certainly don't want them to know. So I needed a big city. And um, I'm glad I went to New York. And then I went back to Indiana again for a while, worked for about three years at a small theater in just outside Fort Wayne. Um, and then went back to New York and then over to Seattle and then down to LA. And it, it, I go back to visit. I was supposed to go back about four weeks ago, but I ended up not being able to. It was a, a reunion of my college at Ball State University where a number of people who I know were going to be gathering for a reunion because they're going to be just uh, raising that building, our old theater, and building a new one. Oh, okay. So I really wanted to go, but there was a personal conflict and I couldn't make it, which is heartbreaking because I wanted to see my brother. I want, didn't want to feel the 28 degree weather, but I wanted to see him. And uh, <laughs> so it didn't work out. But even just talking with my friends who did go, I automatically I go back into that sound, the Indiana sand. Does, just, does Indiana, are there... Is it, is it humid through the summer? Oh my God! Yeah, humid. same here. Yeah, it's, it's humid. <laughs> there should be another word for it. I'll never forget one summer. I'm back there and I'm visiting with my friend Mike on my parents' back porch, 
and we're both smoking at the time. We got our beers, we're smoking, and I put my cigarette in the ashtray. Yeah. And this is probably like August. And I've been watching the lightning bugs slowly rise. You know, they start low to the ground and then they rise up and they disappear. I don't know if you ever noticed that with lightning bugs, but that's what they do. Of course, yeah. Gorgeous to watch. And uh, about that time, you're hearing the crickets. And I look at the smoke that's trailing up from my cigarette, just trailing up like this. Normally, when smoke spirals up, it starts to like, doo, 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 right. Doo. No, the air was so incredibly <laughs> thick yeah. and heavy and wet that the, literally it was just a straight line going up that dissipated into nothing i know that smoke line that, uh... air this air is so freaking thick it was tough man now here it's dry which is a whole another kind of nightmare right uh, because it's a desert los angeles is really a desert oh you know we stole all the water from up north and it should have been just a <laughs> little, little teeny tiny uh, ocean town it's not. Of course, it's spread out thousands of miles now, and it's literally a desert. So if you don't drink water, you're basically going to die. Yeah, <laughs> you have to drink. Well, water. It, it is true. You can get dehydrated pretty easy out now. I have quite often, actually. Yeah, you know, which is where beer comes in. <laughs> <laughs> we had a period this year where the temperature actually got down in the 60s. But the humidity was still up in the 90s. So it was so weird because it, it felt cool when you'd step outside, but you'd be instantly wet. <laughs> That's just weird. You're, yeah, like, weird. you're like a leftover turkey dinner that somebody threw in the fridge. That's just really oh. Yeah, it was just weird. I, I, I've never had that uh, you know high humidity when the temperature's low. Me either. But Nothing it was not much idea. better than when it was hot. It was well, still wet. Yes, because there's humidity. Humidity is always bad. You ever been to Florida? Oh, yeah, you I was in Miami it. this summer, and no. I thought West Virginia was bad. Good oh, Lord. No. Florida's horrible. You swim in the air. Yeah. <laughs> you literally can swim in Food's the air. Food's terrific. Oh, yeah, great. Air, terrible. Awful, awful. And the same thing happens every day in the summer at 4 o'clock in the afternoon uh, in Florida, at least in Fort Lauderdale when I was visiting a friend. Every day for like two weeks, a huge thundercloud would roll in. Yeah, from that's right. the, I'm trying to remember actually, coming in from the west, I think. Last like 20 but, minutes and then gone. Yeah, dump water on you and then disappear. Yeah. <laughs> so just had to pee. So, you yeah, know, it'd make it feel better for the time that it was actually raining and then it'd be worse. Oh, yeah, exactly. For like 10 minutes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, nobody, nobody, that, and nobody I know knows that, that one well. <laughs> oh, oh, it's terrible. And I, but we don't put up with that here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I told you I was a little jealous of LA because it's it's like seventy five to eighty degrees all the time. Pretty much every day. The yeah. lowest we ever get is maybe in the fifties in the dead of winter, but not usually. It's usually about sixty five and bright and sunny. You all know, fifties here, we're still running around in shorts and. I know. I remember. I remember. Sure. Yeah, that's spring. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's not bad. So, I, so I was trying to think of the first thing that I saw you in. So you got to help me with it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a couple at you. You tell me which is okay. the mm -hmm. Okay. So I've got, uh, I've got three, I think, okay. that are in the same area. All right. So Buffy, the oh, sure. player. Yeah, that's the one where my mother, mother told me that she I looked like I gained a little weight. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> the one. Yeah, that's all the one. right. I was, I was the right. bartender uh, on Buffy. Party of five. Sure. sure. Oh my God. Yeah. And the, the, the third one, which may be the, the right answer, because because you never hear anybody talk about this show anymore. Arliss. Oh my God, Arliss. Yeah, Arliss was one of my very, very, very first. I think that's that, one I figured. That must but have I, been I think it was an one. HBO show. I, I probably, honestly, I don't really remember. Damn. Um yeah, I remember I was there only one day and it was one of my early sets, and uh, I was still a little nervous. Um, but the I think the first TV show I did, though, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was Sabrina. Oh, Sabrina. Yeah. Sabrina. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. I've seen you on that one, too. I just I was thinking that came uh, came a little later. But I no, guess it, was, it, it, it may have later. aired. It may have aired after the others. But I think it's the first one I shot. And I learned a big lesson on Sabrina. It was really, really interesting. I, God, I'm going to forget her name, the actress. And, oh, Carolyn. Carolyn Ray. Oh, yeah. Played one of the guns. Mm -hmm. um, I was a clerk at like a, a witch place. I don't know what the hell it was, but also clerk, like basically a DMV clerk. 
right. uh, or, or witches and ghosts and stuff like that. It was very beautiful. And a future friend of mine, Fred Stoller, is to my left, and he's doing something, and then somebody else has a bit over here to my right, and I'm the one in the middle. Cameras are behind me, so they're shooting uh, the sweet girl who was the lead, whose name now I'm totally gone, and Carolyn is right behind her. Melissa. Uh, thank you, Melissa Johan. And and the other sister is, is next to her, or the other aunt. And so they shoot this guy first, both at both sides. So I'm like, okay, I'm getting how this works. All right, once it's my turn, okay, fine. They shot my stuff first. Then they were shooting, no, they, they were shooting their stuff first. Sorry, they always do. They were shooting the star first. And we did the scene like maybe once, maybe twice. Yeah. And suddenly this voice from behind me, and it wasn't the director. It was like a cameraman or the DP <laughs> or somebody directed me, which you never apparently do on set, which I know now. But then I'm, I'm an idiot. I'm, you know, I'm, ooh, well, yeah, you're new. And he said, blah, 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 blah. I think you should blah, 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 blah. While the director is busy with somebody else. And Carolyn stepped around Melissa and said, listen, I think he's doing just fine. Why don't we leave him alone and let the director decide these things? And I'm like, ooh, ooh, a source of tension. But I, I, I have yet to meet her again. And I so want to thank her for that because that was just, she didn't have to do that. Yeah. You know, she really didn't. She's looking out for you. Yeah. She saw it happen. And also she's establishing her own power in that scenario. Because if you're a recurring character or a series regular in her case, on a television show, you outrank everybody except maybe the producers, but definitely all the directors because it's always guest directors. They're always different. And so the DP, though he might've been there all the time, she still had more power than him or whoever it was who said that to me. I don't remember now who it was. But it was like, wow, there's a lesson learned. Because <laughs> in, in theater, everybody tells everybody everything, you know, pretty much. And that was my background. Well, yeah, theater, it's more collaborative. And much you, more. You know, much you just want to make sure that the show's good. Yeah, sure, exactly. I mean, an actor can't direct another actor on stage. Right. But they can make a suggestion, and nobody's going to freak out. Uh, on set, no, 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 no. Movie, film, TV, no, no, no. Unless you're working together, every, like on Friends or something, every single day, they can probably talk to each other about what right. to do. Otherwise, no. You just Have you up. ever had to step in since then and help another actor out? Only myself. I had to step in for myself one time. Yeah, uh, okay. Because there was some mistreatment going on on a major set Ooh. and it was it was it was really very disappointed disappointing yeah. because i'd always wanted to work with this director it's a major freaking director always wanted to work with him and we're getting my we've been mic'd up so we have our mics on. And I, again i have a day part it's like i'm there for the day yeah and it's it takes place in the 50s and i've got the, the props man is putting uh my name tag on me mm -hmm. you know because i'm a clerk in a store put the name tag on and blah, blah, blah. And I mentioned to him, I said, oh, by the way, when I auditioned for this on tape, because now we do just fucking self tapes. So we have to make all the decisions ourselves, <laughs> which is fine, but not fine because you don't get any feedback. It's a nightmare. Uh, okay. But at any rate, um, I have a pair of fake 1950s style glasses, like horn rims, basically. Yeah. And with this haircut and this look, I can do period 50s like that. You know, it's nothing. So I, I had two speeches I needed to do, two separate scenes for the audition. And I wore the glasses in one and I didn't wear them in the second one to give them an option. Whoever they yeah, are. makes sense. Right. The one they cast me for was the one that I happened to be wearing the glasses in. So I thought, okay, I'll take them to set, you know, because it'll just make it easier on everybody. So I had them in my pocket. The props person is talking to me, putting the name tag on. I said, oh, by the way, uh, just so you know, when I auditioned for this part, the one that I got, I was wearing the, I barely got the sentence out. When this guy laid into me i mean laid into me and there are a lot of background players around there are a lot of people around yeah. and he's kind of yelling at me and i'm like wow. why are you yelling at me right that was my first take whenever something like that happens to me i'm like my mom i go to a place of safety i'm just kind of like okay let's center let's be cool yeah. don't respond wait until you hear everything that's going on and i told him i said oh i'm so sorry no 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 i understand that because he was saying you know you can't bring stuff to set actors do this all the time and then props we have to match it and we may not have it and blah 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 and i'm sorry but it's a 50 show you would have these glasses but that's a side issue but he, the fact he's yelling at me 
yelling at me. I'm a principal. And I'm like, no, you can't do yeah, this. See, he was upset more with something that had happened previously. <laughs> yeah. And he was trying to intimidate me. And I'm sorry, I got 60 movies. You're not going to do that. I've worked with bigger directors than this. You're not going to do that. But finally, he just kept going and going and going and going and going. And he kept saying, oh, I wish actors would learn how to blah, blah, blah. And you're there again, blah, blah, blah. And you have to bring doubles and blah, blah, blah. And he's right about the doubles. But, you know, it's a 50 set. They would have them. But at any rate, I finally stopped him. I held my hand up and I said, look, I appreciate everything you've said. And I completely agree with everything you said. Just so you know, the next time props is casting a film, I'll take that advice. Otherwise, I'm going to pay attention to what the director has to say. I just shut him down. He shut down really hard. That was a big mistake. <laughs> I did it, and I'm proud of myself. I'm so glad I did it because on set, the actor does have, no matter who it is, and this is background, the actor does have more influence and power than most of the other people on set. Not well, you would director. expect that. Well, well. It's not even that. It's like, because so many actors abuse that power and that's what drives me crazy. True. That's why I take it so much before I respond with something because actors, people are looking for actors to misbehave. Yeah. And they often do. And I hate those actors. They make me absolutely fucking crazy because you yeah. should be happy as hell to be on the set. But what I was letting him know was that you've just crossed a personal line, not even a professional line, but a personal line with me. And in this situation, I think I might have more power than you. So you need to shut up, basically. But turns out <laughs> he's worked like six films with the AD who was on that set. And so I happened to see them talking to each other and kind of looking in my direction. I went, oh, great. And so then the AD made my life un bearable on set that day <laughs> just unbearable yep. by putting me out of shots by putting me and i was like oh fuck i just fucked this up and but i still am proud that i did that you still because... kind of established that boundary which i i uh, mean to me a lot of people wouldn't have waited as long as you did to say something <laughs> that's very very true that's very true and were i any kind of uh larger name or known name he never would have done it so he was just, he was pushing me around as like, well, you know, you're not going to be able to do that. You know, I know very, I've worked with him five times, the person who did wardrobe on this show, and he's got three Academy Awards. We're friends. Don't, don't, don't do that. Just be human. Don't be an asshole. Well, yeah. if, if, if just say, you know, oh, I'm so sorry. We won't have doubles. We can't use them. And I only brought them because I thought I was doing a favor. Well, you know, that's I, the I, thing. I didn't have to have them. I didn't give a fuck one way or the he other. He could have just been polite and said, "Oh, thanks. I'll, you know, I don't know if we'll be able to use them, but it, you know, appreciate the exactly, brand." Yeah, that's exactly my point. Is I was raised mm -hmm. well. People aren't just nasty to each other automatically, no matter I where. Feel you that southern charm. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, but oh, I only tell that story um, to exemplify to you what your question was, was, has any, have I ever done that for other actors? I don't think I've been in the situation where I've had to do it for them. Uh, but I would, yeah. I definitely would. No question about it. There was one actor misbehaving on, badly. Oh God. He ruined the, he ruined the shoot for everybody. How do you misbehave? And I, kicked, I, I eventually, I kicked him out of my trailer because he was there. I was like, get out. I don't want you in here. Was, was, was it? Was, I'm, I'm assuming they were fine on set. Was it more the, no, no, he was an asshole on set. To other, he was ruining other people's scenes on purpose. I don't know why you would do that as an actor. He would only act when the camera was on him. Uh, and so if it was on you, he'd be just like, oh, blah, 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 blah. It's like, it's, it's, it's just, it's a trick. Selfish. Actors Selfish. do this shit all the time. Really? It's a, it's a horrible business. It's a horrible business. <laughs> I'm learning all the ins and outs now. Well, yeah, I'm happy to tell you more, but no names. <laughs> Well, no, no, no. We don't want it. We don't want to upset anybody. So, what are the shows you want to talk about? I got well, see, uh, one of them. I should probably ask you about the Hills Have Eyes. You know, oh, that's, that's great. one. Of course, everybody loves. We had uh, um, Suze Lanier from the original oh. has been on the uh, program. Have you spoken with Michael Perriman by any chance? You know, I, we have missed each other several times uh, yeah. with that and he's come through west virginia several times and and we had it set up where uh we were going to interview at the studio and it just didn't work out oh that's a shame he's a great guy yeah I, that's what i heard i had a, yeah. a good friend of mine who had set the interview up got to do a haunted house with him and oh fun yeah raved about how great a person he was he but really is he's at, at some point we'll get him on, but not yet not yet. Hills, Hills Have Eyes was great. Um, 
It's funny because the summer before I auditioned for the Hill, or the, the in January before I auditioned, I was at Sundance Film Festival and saw a film um, that just blew me away. Uh, the American, they changed the title. It's French. The American title was Switchblade Romance. Okay. I'm yeah, trying I'll know Alexander Aha is the director. He's the French director. I'm trying to remember the original name, and it's it's left me. Switchblade Romance is a terrible title, and it doesn't match the film <laughs> but it, at all. It was terrible, and and I saw this film at a um, probably a midnight screening because it was a dark, scary, wonderful film. I highly recommend it. Um, <laughs> even though the ending is fucked up a little bit, a lot of people hate the ending. But that were the producers that had nothing to do with Alexander, the director at all. He was outranked and they changed the ending on him, which is a whole other story. But um, anyway, I saw that film and I was so blown away by it. I was just like, this is an incredible movie because yeah. it's relentless absolutely relentless once the action starts it does not stop and you, the action you can't get your breath oh yeah and the action starts with a slow pan outside a huge semi-truck trailer which speaks to me because that was my natural father's job he drove an 18 wheeler in indiana oh, okay. so i recognize i knew you hear the rumble rumble and you can feel the vibration and the windows open on the driver's side but you can't see in you're below Time is coming around like this very, very, very slow. As soon as it gets just past the, the driver frame, the driver's window frame, an arm shoots out with a severed head, oh. drops it on the ground and takes off. And we are gone from that moment on. It's an insane, wonderful, I wonderful, that terrifying. Up. Oh, you do. It's a terrifying movie. Anyway, uh, I either I found out or my agent told me, I don't remember which, had an audition. Uh, with Alexander for um, The Hills Have Eyes. So I went in, I met with the casting director. I did the scene. The original scene I read was, I can't remember the character's name. It's not the one I played. I played Goggle, uh, the guy with the American flag in his head. I forget oh, yeah. the name of the character. But I, I read that monologue and I got a call back. So I got to meet Alex and I knew who it was and I'd seen his films. So when I walked in the room, I'm like, first of all, He's so French. Alex is so French. He's like, yes, what is it? <laughs> with this long hair, he's very much a hippie child. He's, like, really? he's wonderful. And uh, I said, I got to tell you, you blew me the fuck away in this movie. I'm, I haven't been the same since. And I wasn't sucking up to him. I literally wasn't. Because, again, I'm in the theater. If if I, I serve one God, and that is the God of art, period. I'll do work for money, but I love art, and I know art, and it's the one thing I do know. And so I told him uh, basically that. I said, I'm not blowing smoke. It was an incredible film. He goes, right at the ending, I said, something tells me that wasn't your fault. He's like, it was not. How did you know this? So we started talking a little bit more. Well, I didn't book it. It was like forever. And I was very disappointed because I, I really wanted to be in this movie. I went, oh, well, whatever. And one day, maybe like, gosh, I think it was about three months later, I was at the gym and I was just, you know, I'd finished the gym and I'm changing. I'm at my locker and blah, blah, my phone rings. I pick it up. It's my agent. He goes, uh, uh, where are you? I said, I'm at the gym. He goes, are you sitting down? I said, no. He said, sit down. I said, okay. He goes, so you're going to be going to Morocco in a month. I went, what? What the fuck? What? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah. He goes, remember the hills have eyes? I said, well, of course I do. What are you talking about? He goes, you're not the role you auditioned for, but they want you for a different one named Goggle. You'll have a, a makeup test at KNB. You'll go over. They'll make a head mold. They'll yeah. do makeup, blah, blah, blah. So it was great. Absolutely great. And so I got the role far later than, and not the same one that I'd actually auditioned for, but I got to work with Alex. And it was just, it was an incredible experience. I mean, Morocco, first of all, is beautiful. Um, yeah, just the trip would be worth it. Oh, it was wonderful. And one night I'm sitting out at this beautiful freaking and this is not my life okay i'm a small boy from indiana and i'm in morocco where the air is beautiful and you can see every star ever created and uh, uh i'm sitting by the pool with uh billy drago and a couple other actors from the the uh, uh catherine gosh that's so bad with names um not catherine hillman that's tv just ca i can see her i can't think of her name anyway we're all a second keener Catherine no, 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 I love Catherine Keener, but yeah, I with yeah. her. I'd have to look it up. And she's well known. But we're all sitting around and we're talking, and there are horror icons there. It's like, oh, this is fun. And bats suddenly <laughs> appeared. Bats, dozens of bats 
You got to be wow. careful of bats in that area. Flying low to our table. Oh, beautiful. It was absolute. I love bats. It was wonderful because it's a getting dark, not totally dark. You can still see there's enough light from the moon. And these bats are flying over our table and they'll say eating all the little bugs that are there. It was a great experience. And and oh, then we shot and that was even better. I mean, the whole thing was insane. Yeah. Uh, I'm Have so you ever been to Austin and seen the bats there? No, but I'd love to. I went. I was out there. We went to the uh, music festival out there this year. And South by Southwest. The uh, no um, Austin City Limits. They're uh, oh sure yeah 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 of course. My um, uh, wife's brother lives in Austin, so we stayed with him. Went to the festival, but there's a bridge there, and and at mm-hmm. dusk yeah. you can stand on that bridge and thousands of bats come out from under the bridge at dusk. And oh great, there's nothing yeah. like. Them. Yeah, well I we were there. And we stood on that bridge and waited and waited and waited and and they didn't come. They didn't come. And finally, one bat flies out. And I was like, that's it? That's that's all that's all I get. Come from West Virginia, I get one bat. So that's it. We gave up. So we only got one bat? Seriously? You're gonna tell me the rest came out. That's well, so we went to eat. You know, we're like, okay, we've been here for two hours. We got one bat. So we went to eat (laughs) and we're sitting. Eating our food, um, and look over, and there's just this swarm, swarm yeah. of bats coming out from under the bridge. I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" <laughs> yeah, I guess their alarm didn't go off or something. It didn't go off, but it, <laughs> it was still amazing, even though we weren't on the bridge. Oh, kind so, of the so I got to tell you, there's something about them. As a, I mean, growing up in Indiana, of course, we have bats there too, and I always yeah. loved it from the time I was a kid. They scared me a little. Because, you know, you hear all these rumors like, oh, you know, they'll get in your hair. It's like bullshit. But uh, also they'll Mexico, avoid you for the most part. Oh, yeah. They don't want to have anything to do with you unless you got a bug on you. Yeah. Uh, they're uh, uh, in Puerto Vallarta, where I often go. We stayed one time in a uh, big Airbnb. We got like several friends and we were all in a group. And the pool that they had, which it was up on top of the building, and there was a pool out there, but a huge tree above it. And we didn't know. We're sitting in the pool. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Suddenly, the thing comes alive, and they'd all been sleeping in there, and we didn't know it. Hanging up, <laughs> and they were just flying everywhere. The girls ran inside screaming. Oh, they yeah, were bad. so scared. And I just sat there and dug the hell out of it. It's so beautiful to see. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of amazing creatures, really. They really, really are. Uh, my mom was in a play once at Muncie Civic. I wasn't there, but she told me the story. It was some dark, haunted, scary play, you know, a murder or something. I guess, Christy, yeah. I don't know what the hell it was. But uh, she's playing opposite a friend of hers, Andy Rent, who's still, uh, Andy, they're twins, Andy and Al Rent, and I still think they work at the theater. At any rate, she, they're, they're doing a scene, blah, 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 blah. And suddenly, at the most perfect moment, this bat comes flying from this the the uh, rafters from the, uh, what's that called up there? I forget what it's called. The, where the battens are staged. Yeah, yeah. And she comes flying out, starts flipping around the stage. Andy, Andy practically apparently practically shit himself. And mom's <laughs> like, "Oh, it's a bat! How cool!" And it goes back up, and she can see the terror in Andy's eyes. But they still have to do the scene, and so they're, they're doing the scene as best they can. And then, as one big organ moment, you know, da da comes the bat flew out across the audience, and the ushers had opened the back door. I mean, the the entryway doors, and it flew out into the lobby and outside. It just went. Boop straight out and it was a perfect moment and somebody after the show i show you not came up to my mom and said oh, that was an amazing play you were just incredible in it and andy was good but how the hell did you get that back to do that <laughs> <laughs> and mom's like oh you know magic of theater <laughs> yeah and then you've got like all the audiences coming the next Oh, to, to see the bat. To yeah. see the bat. <laughs> uh, we didn't get to see a bat. It must have not been working. It was like the Phantom of the Opera chandelier comes flying <laughs> down. Only the bat went out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a great story. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, well, good. well, being a theater family, you get these stories all the time. You really, really do. It's like, and then what's nice is you get trained as a kid. You get trained telling these stories over the dinner table at night. You know, so it's like that. It's it, our dinner tables were always a blast. Well, either they were a blast telling funny stories, or they were silent because somebody was angry. <laughs> One of those two. But there I've was, been at both uh, of those tables. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, yeah. But there's there was either way. There was always a martini, a rum and coke, and wine involved. So it was <laughs> a great yes. way to go up. Yeah. Which one of those is your drink? Uh, well, I like whiskey. 
actually now. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm the Jameson. I love my Jameson. Yeah. I, I drank vodka for years, but then I, I show you not like one Saturday night, it turned on me. It's kind of went, nah. Vodka like, will do that. And once did. you've had like a bad experience with vodka, oh, you're done. And that's also true with me and tequila because I didn't know how to ride the wave. I just didn't know. I like I was, some tequila. I was a party tequila guy. And so I would slam them. And then before I knew it, I was on the bathroom floor. I'm like, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> Last time I did tequila was here in town with my friend Michelle. We went to a couple of local bars. It was like, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon. And we're having Mexican food. And we're having uh, margaritas. And yay. But then we had to give up that table because we'd been there for two hours. And it was their dinner rush. So we went over to another bar around the corner, which is a cheaper <laughs> bar. And we started drinking their margaritas, which were made with really shitty tequila. Ooh, Neither that's of where us, you get in trouble. Oh, it's bad. Neither of us remember the ride home. Neither one of us. She drove. Neither of us can remember it. Last time I saw her that day was passed out on my couch as I'm walking my way toward my bed. And when I eventually woke up, she was gone. I have no idea where she went. We're still dear friends, and we talk about this all the time. But that was my last experience with tequila. I just can't. I can't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I, I learned pretty early. You gotta, you gotta pay the extra dollar and get the good you tequila. You really do. Tear you up. Yeah, it was bad. It was a bad experience. But so now I'm a Jameson man, but not every night. Usually, a little I'm tougher to slam Jameson. It is. And also you want to savor it. I mean, I, I really like Jameson. It's really a nice thing. I I, I, I was turned on to Jameson. Well, all whiskey, but Jameson, because um, I always liked clear liquor yeah. before I found whiskey. And uh, uh, even though my dad was a whiskey drinker, I was probably one of the reasons I didn't want to do it because I wasn't a fan. Uh, right. <laughs> but I was going to say, uh, I discovered how to drink whiskey on the set of um, Mohawk, uh, which was in oh, Syracuse, yeah. New York. And everybody there was drinking Jameson. So I started, I went, oh, this is good. So I like this. And I can write, it, it's not even a wave. It's more of a ripple. When, when I get the buzz on Jameson, I can tell that I shouldn't have another one. When it's time that I shouldn't have another one. Because it just, it feels different. But it's still controllable, you know. Uh, well, that's the key with any alcohol. You have to know. That oh, you yeah. have to be able to tell when you that's the limit one exactly. more and you're going to go over the limit <laughs> especially when you hit a certain age because it's simply not the same as when you're in your 20s when you can drink 14 different drinks and the recovery is much longer yeah and you might have a headache in the morning but now it's like forget about it it's, <laughs> i can't play this game anymore but now like at home i'll usually just have some wine you know unless yeah. i'm going out, then i'll go to whiskey i started drinking uh, prosecco because i don't like wine yeah, white wine's okay, but I, I'm not a like my my wife's a red wine drinker. That's just not oh, sorry. Good. So I so I, I but I wanted to have something with her, and I didn't want liquor every time. So prosecco is my answer for. Well, that. I've never really done it. I should try it. I've never really done it. Now I'm not a classy guy, so my wine is a good box Same. of wine. <laughs> A good box of wine. <laughs> uh, box of wine that costs it, like I don't know, that's kind of an bucks. oxymoron, right? <laughs> not not in my book. It's not. It's like perfect for me. I can have five glasses of Franzia a night and not be so a, you're you're a cheap date. Oh, well, you have no idea how cheap I can be. <laughs> Ask my agent, she'll tell you. <laughs> you can get Ezra. Oh yeah, no problem. Get Ezra. Yeah, you can get Ezra. <laughs> It is what it is. But yeah, I, I like to drink, but not to excess. I mean, I've I've seen the well, effect. Not excess, that. it's not fun. It's not like As you get older, you realize that. It's not really fun during, and it's definitely not fun after. Definitely not. And it's like, why, why would I want to do that? Why would I waste another night where I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, you know? Or maybe doing things that I shouldn't be doing, like, I don't know, driving? The I mean, last time I that I was, life. like, forget drunk you know or i wake yeah. up and i don't know what happened yeah my uh my oldest daughter got married and good occasion to this and she got married on new year's day oh my and, gosh which was and, you know that's great but i had a really hard time with it so so that night ohio state was playing for the national championship and <laughs> i have uh friends that graduated from there so we were at their house you know, sure. you know, you know watching the game and I was drinking Mai Tais that oh, tasted uh, like punch. Yeah. And, and oh, yeah. I, just didn't, I didn't realize, you know, I was. Sweet kinda, oh, sweet drinks will kill you. It absolutely hammered. I, I don't remember getting home. I don't remember leaving the, the party, any of that. 
I just know that I had a hard day because, of, you know, my daughter got married, and which was a wonderful occasion. And just, you know, as a father, I had a hard day. Right, right, and, right. And so I don't remember. I remember the wedding. Don't remember anything after. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> well, at least you didn't embarrass yourself at the wedding. That would have been the worst. No, 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 no. And it, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Thankfully, nobody from the wedding was at this party. Oh, yeah. You know, it was a football party. See, that's so, another thing about growing up in the Midwest, especially Indiana, where I grew up, which is flat. I wasn't yeah. from southern Indiana, where there were hills. I'm from Muncie, which is cornfields and cows I'm this, and drunks. That's literally all you got. Yeah. So growing up, you know, when when me and my friends would go out and we'd go drinking, even before we were like, you know, anywhere near the legal age, we get drunk. We could always drive home. Yeah. Always. And this is many years ago. And now you didn't bust your ass, but it's nothing but a straight line. So, and I shouldn't probably be advising people of this because I don't know who listens or watches this. But it's like, keep your eye on the horizon. It's like when, you, when you're a seasick, keep your eye on the horizon right. and you won't be sick. And you'll and get home. <laughs> stay on the line and you'll get there. Well, that's good in a way, but it's also really, really bad because, I mean, not that long ago, I went out to see a friend show at a bar, like a nightclub. And uh, people kept buying me drinks. And so I kept drinking it. And I didn't realize till I was walking. God, this is so stupid. And I'm only telling the story because I don't want people to do this. Um, I'm, I literally have to walk around a corner to get to where my car is parked. Now, my car is a beater. I love my car. She's a 1990 Toyota Corolla. And when I drive nice. any car, when I drive any car, that car is an extension of me because I've been driving since I was 13 years old. So it's like I, it's an extension of me. It's not a car. It has a name, it has a person, <laughs> and it's going to get me home safe because we're friends. And so I, I got in Vicky. I named her Vicky, Vicky Carr. So I get in her and I'm sitting there and I'm, I have to go forward a half a block, turn left kind of illegally and go a straight line all the way home because LA is like a grid pretty much. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't even think on the way to my car, not drunk. I didn't even think on the way to my car call a fucking uber <laughs> that's usually what happens well i didn't grow up with that yeah all i was i'm drunk car go straight that's that it was like some old training kicked in <laughs> and i got home just fine but when i got home <laughs> this is so fucking stupid i i i walked in the door I well, here's what I woke up to the next day. <laughs> the front door standing open in an apartment building. Screen door standing open. I mean, it's free access. That's Anybody come mean. all snakes, spiders, burglars, rapists, doesn't matter who, come on into my apartment. I went, oh my God, I was drunk. And I shut all the doors. I went downstairs to my car. Where the door to my car is standing wide open, wow. windows down. And I'm like, Oh my God, I can never do this again. I could have lost everything, but I also could have killed somebody. See, that's that was the horrifying thing. I think we've all got those stories where after you have that kind of sinking feeling in your stomach, like, oh, that was, I was really oh, lucky. <laughs> never again. I, I sent a prayer up to God. I said, never again is this going to happen. I swear to you, it's just never going to happen. It was just stupid. And it was almost it's so weird because I kind of remember not thinking about it. And like it wasn't a thing. I'm just going to drive home. And it's like, that's what I would have done when I was 16 and did several times. It also saved me once in Illinois when I was shooting. Uh, what was I shooting there? In a place called uh, State Center, Iowa, not Illinois. State Center, Iowa. Uh, I was shooting, God, I don't remember the name of it. Oh, it's called Rain. Nobody ever saw this movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know that one. And we're all drunk outside of town, about 15 miles. Crew, cast, everybody's. Well, we were literally doing peanut uh, 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 skating on tabletops. We were having so much fun <laughs> to see who could do it without knocking a table over. It was a blast in the bar. It was a big old redneck bar. They were having fun. <laughs> and we were all really drunk. And uh, there were about three cars, I think. You know, rental cars. This is a movie. So these were rental cars. Yep. I'm the first one heading back on a straight highway again in the middle of the Midwest. It's dark. I can turn my lights out. Total dark. It's like, you know, it's flat. And so I'm heading back and I say, oh my God, there's a car in front of me going the speed limit. Fuck this guy. <laughs> Fuck this guy. Nim, 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 nim. I don't want to coast. I have to get to my bed. And I pass it. As soon as the line's divided, I, I passed him. Then I see in front of him is a state trooper. Of course. Hi. 
So I look, I went, shit, <laughs> it's kind of, I'm not going too fast. I'm going maybe five over at this point because I'm just starting to pass this fool. And so I was like, all right, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Hold it on. Hold it on. Kind of signal. Go to the right. Go on. Don't speed up. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Didn't stop me. Didn't pull me over. So I was like, I was drunk on my ass in Iowa and like two o'clock in the morning and I'm passing a state troop. Yeah. Stupid. But stupid. Plus I knew how to do it and I didn't waver at all. He had no reason to pull me over. I mean, these are ridiculous stories that I should not be telling. The <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, it is, is taught me that if I'm riding with drunk Ezra, it needs to be a straight line. <laughs> a straight, a straight line. Any curves or turns, we, we don't want to get into that, man. I'll either over or undercompensate and probably kill us both. So let's not. <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm never going to get Is Fort Wayne near Muncie? It's northwest, probably about 45 minutes. Okay. Okay. My, 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 that same daughter uh, uh -huh. works for uh, Asher uh, Agency and okay. and their home office is in Fort Wayne. So she's oh, been right? there several times. I, you know, I haven't been to Indiana since uh, since I was a kid, but she's been Lucky out you. there, you know, every every few months she has to go out that way. Yeah. It's a pretty little town. It's it's gotten pretty big from what I've been given to understand. Yeah. People I know on Facebook have, you know, post pictures there in Fort Wayne and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, that looks really different from when I was there. Because we were working at a place called Bear Creek Farms. <laughs> so it was crazy. It was literally a red barn that had a restaurant downstairs that was buffet style and served chicken, mashed potatoes, corn, corn on the cob or all, food. <laughs> green beans. And uh, Salisbury steak, and that's what they would serve. Did, did you still... have brown or white gravy? Oh, brown, both actually, as I recall, because one is sausage and the other is uh, meat right. or is right. meat. Yeah. Oh, so you know, I know how to, I know how to get that gravy dip in there. Just push it down. And dip. <laughs> I still love that food to this day. Yeah, me too. Anyway, uh, we had a little teeny tiny stage. It was no bigger than this room, and we would perform on there doing musical reviews. It was great. It was a nice little gig. And we had to go outside of Fort Wayne to get to Bear Creek Farms. Well, now Bear Creek Farms is like fucking huge. It's turned into like an amusement park kind of land. And several great stories there, like when the Amish kids came in and sat in the back row of our little teeny tiny theater in the top of this barn. It's ridiculous. And they wanted to see the show. And they were literally dragged out by their parents. You know, Jacob, Elijah, come with me now. You know, they just dragged them out. It was kind of weird. Here comes a show, but, you know, whatever the fuck. We're singing. And also another good story there is our tech guy loved pot. Just was stoned all the freaking time. Just out of his mind stoned. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. Mo, he was a wonderful guy. And one night we were back at the housing unit and we got really, really high. And we say, we're hungry. He's like, well, let's go into Fort Wayne and get some pizza. So we he, somebody else drives and we get there because like, I can't drive on pot. So we, we sit there and I'm getting out of the car. And I'm standing up. I'm, my eyes are like this. And Mo looks at me and goes, dude, open your eyes. Because <laughs> they're like literally closed. You know you're in bad shape if the guy that does that most of oh. the time is telling oh, you. Oh, yeah. He goes, you're going to fucking you know, rat us out. It was hilarious. But it was fun. I was there like maybe three summers, I think, I played there. It was, we had a lot of fun. That's awesome. That's yeah. all. Well, Ezra, thank you so much. This is Are we done? You, you have to. You got to come back. We got we got to get to the show. We got to do this again sometime. Oh, your show. Oh. <laughs> I thought, what? Come back to West Virginia. Hey, come on. You can come back to West, West Virginia. Virginia. To. <laughs> Tell all your movie friends in West Virginia to hire me, and then I'll come back. That's what I'll mm -hmm. do. We, I might be, actually, I might be in North Carolina uh, January. Is that oh, far? Really? My, bro my brother's in Raleigh. Oh, is that right? I th yeah. think it's Charleston's up there, right, in North Carolina? Let's see. Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, then I'm going to be in North Carolina. There's another city that starts with a C that I'll probably be in. Chapel Hill, maybe? <laughs> I don't freaking know. I don't know till wardrobe calls where I'm going. But uh, yeah, I'm supposed to shoot there for about a week, uh, January. They postponed it from this month, actually. Yeah. Well, uh, and I'm assuming that's probably strike related, right? You get the. No, actually, it had an interim agreement. And so we were going to be able to shoot it even during the strike. Oh, very nice. You know what an interim agreement was. Right? Yeah, yeah. It let you let you actually promote. Well, yeah, it also yeah. lets you shoot. And so you agree to all the terms that SAG had demanded. That's that simple.
Yeah. Uh, but at any rate, uh, it was pushed because uh, the director apparently had a health emergency. So they had to it back in Taiwan. So they had to send him back. And now he's back. And we'll figure out what happens when he gets back. So it looks like January will be in near you. Yeah, that's that's fairly close to us. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we may have to come out there and track you down. Yeah, be all right with me. I got nothing to do unless I'm on set. All right, dude. Nice to meet you. Oh, uh, so nice to meet you, sir. And uh, yeah, a couple of little things before we uh, wrap up. Uh, sure, I'm happy to keep be- talking. I got nothing but the laundry. Well, you've, got the, you've got that January uh, movie you're starting. Anything else you have coming out that we can kind of keep an eye out for? Uh, actually, no. The only thing that I did, uh, well, I, I have shot stuff. It's already been released. I mean, I was lucky enough to shoot during the pandemic uh, a couple films. Did, um, um, God help me, Brooklyn 45, which okay. is rated top 10 from Variety Horror Films of last year. Nice. Uh, Last year, top ten, Ted Gagan yeah. did Mohawk, and it's a great movie. I've seen it; it's so beautiful. We, I love Mohawk. It's not sla- Mohawk is wonderful, it's, yeah. but this isn't slasher or bloody. There's a couple little bloody things in it, but it's more of a ghost story. See, that's more my type of horror movie. Oh, you'll love it then, Brooklyn Forty Five. You gotta, you gotta check it out. Yeah. And yeah. David Slade, of course, a uh, uh, well-known director, of Luther, and um, he. Love directed- Luther. Yeah, I love David, and he directed my series Crossbones in Puerto Rico. And he, and oh, I were... you know, I, I did mean uh, mean to to bring up uh, Crossbones because oh, it great. was uh, it wasn't it a syndicated show or did, did it, it was NBC? It was not, okay, um, okay. Uh, yeah, and they so did that show was great. That was back when we didn't really have a lot of pirate stuff. So that's well, the, was... it's funny because we opened the same year as Black Sails, and Black Sails was on Stars. It was the stars yeah. and they got to show titty and boob but we couldn't do that because we were network and so black sales got all the audience um even though we had john malcolm as a star know, it's, you, you know, yeah so it didn't do well plus nbc didn't push it it was a very expensive show for them well you know i was watching it they were re-showing i don't remember when they showed it originally but they were re-showing it late at night and and oh is that right and, yeah and around here and i would watch it would love that show Oh, I do too. Yeah, it was wonderful. It was a great shoot. So, oh my God, it was so much fun. I got to do more stunts on that. And you got to be a pirate. That's awesome. Oh, was, are you kidding me? It was freaking great. <laughs> um, there's that. But what was the point of this? Oh, what else I shot? Uh, David's movie, uh, which just finally came out. Uh, it was pushed back a year. Uh, oh God, I can't believe Dark Harvest, which oh. is now available. Oh, I forget on what, but it's out there. It's out there because I've seen I've seen advertisements for that. It's kind of a Halloween movie. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's done very, very well. Then I shot something else and I don't remember. Oh, I don't know, whatever. But I was shooting during uh, the pandemic. But what I did on my off time during the pandemic yeah. was my sister had mentioned something that she she was beginning to forget stories from when we were kids. So I thought I'm a good writer. So I thought oh, I'm going to start writing stuff down. So it really took up a lot of time when it was during isolation. It was great because I could just write and write and write, work in the garden, and I'm fine. And I ended up writing an entire book. It's like 300, at this point, 310 pages, I think. And it's a series of memoirs about growing up in Indiana um, called The Household Maine. And I'm hoping to have that published within the next year. I don't know when, but I'm talking to editors now. And it's it's really nice. It's I'm very happy with the book. Um, and it's basically about growing up with an understanding mother and an absent father and what it's like to change midstream, basically, from a white trash background into an upper middle class background when my mother remarried. So it's a, it's an interesting read, and I hope to get it out there soon. It's called Yeah, the actually, that's a really interesting story. Like, like, I could see that as a series. Uh, that's what yeah. somebody else said. Yeah, I, uh, which would be great. I'd be more than happy if they make it. Yeah. Shit. But here's the thing: they won't fucking cast me. You know, they'll go, they'll say what they'll say is they want an Ezra Buzzington type, but not Ezra Buzzington. I've I actually mean, seen that in print before. Maybe, maybe you could play the uh, dad. I could actually. I look a lot like my dad. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can play a fallen down, sad, deadbeat, drunk. Yeah, I can do that. Did you? They actually have said. We need an Ezra, Ezra Buzzington type. Yeah. There's something called the breakdowns, which we used to get, which would describe yeah. what shows are being cast and blah, 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 blah. And you read through them. And I literally saw one that said Ezra Buzzington type. And I called my agent and went, Ma. Did you <laughs> get the role? Uh, no, because my agent said, you don't want this. They can't afford you. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. 
I guess. <laughs> I just like, kind of like doing the work, but okay. Yeah. And I don't remember. It was a small, really small. It was like a short film or something. Yeah, but still. Isn't that crazy? But I became a type without even knowing it. So if anybody wants to read any of my uh, household main shit, they can go to my Facebook. They can go to my Insta. No, I don't really go on Insta that much. I'm more of an old man, so I do Facebook. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Ezra Buzzington. You'll find me. You know, yeah. Well, to, that was my next yeah. question was where we find you on there. But yeah, it comes right up. You yeah. so far, there's not somebody stealing that name. Not yet. Not good. You know. Now I left Twitter uh, a while back, and don't plan to go back because it's just a wasteland. I, I, if, I was going to say most of us have uh, you know a handle, but we don't do anything on it. Yeah, it's I haven't got rid of it. It's it, like it's, just, it. it's it's very angry. It is, and I, you know, there's enough going on post pandemic of people acting out, and I I don't need to see that in my feed. I just don't. Yeah, same. I'm too old to take it. So it's like, I think you know, I think a lot of us started doing that uh, in 2020. Is yeah. any of those negative influences and stuff? You're just kind of weeding them out because we got tired of seeing all that stuff. I, you're, there's you know, there's it's a cup that's very very full. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't I don't even want to empty it. I just don't want to have the cup around. Yeah, so. yeah. Just get rid yeah. of the cup. But Insta is different, you know, it's mostly visuals and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I just, I never remember to do it. Showing your food and yeah, yeah, and yeah, where you're at for the day. <laughs> and also with Facebook, honestly, I like it because I can talk to people back and forth. I have conversations. I've always, you know, at Facebook, they get a lot of bad rap, justifiably oh, yeah. so. But I've always loved Facebook. Yeah, I've had a good just, time. You know, you keep up with your old friends, you show your pictures. It's, if you use it correctly, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just don't be an asshole. <laughs> So find me on Facebook. Yeah, that, and moral of the story. Find yeah, exactly Facebook. right. Exactly right. You know, I've always said that it's just it's social media is not that hard. Just don't no. be a jerk. Yeah, exactly. Be social. <laughs> be social. If somebody doesn't agree with you, just say okay and yeah. move on. <laughs> during the strike, during the strike, it was really interesting on several of the uh, Facebook sites I belong to, like you know, crews and uh, people in the industry and what have you. Yeah. Um, I used it. I think pretty well to to present the sag after side of the strike, even though everybody was very supportive of yeah. it. Pretty much all the unions were periodically there would be somebody saying, well, you know, I'm losing my house. And yeah, of course you are. Yeah, we all are. But I, I yeah. like, not a good thing. But but one had to look further into the future to see especially what AI was going to be doing right. in terms of uh, destroying basically the unions. Um, and so I see fully understands that because they will be some of the first ones replaced and so it, it's important that we get what we want and it's still not a done deal i mean yeah the We're still waiting on it to be what uh, approved ratified. Yeah. it has to be ratified by membership and that final voting i think is by december 5th or something like it's, that I, I mean to me it's a no-brainer if you use somebody's likeness you should have to pay for it every time you use it which is what this contract requires yeah. And that's, just, and that's the way it should be. That's, that's not there are that's other true. things that we needed to get that we didn't get. So a, a lot of the membership, and I understand it, and I hear it, and I kind of partially agree, is like there there are major loopholes in this current contract. But at this point, my thinking is at least we have the guardrails up. Well, uh, you so can, after, I'm assuming, add to down the road, but you, need, two and a half you need the framework in place. Yeah, in two and a half years, now that we have the language about AI established in a contract, right. in two and a half years, there hopefully will be more leverage for us to demand more of, yeah. of the producers than, or the studios rather than the streamers than they're currently giving us. So that's the thinking. Uh, but a number of people in the union are not happy about that. And I understand why. I mean, Justin, I've Dave, heard some uh, complaints about that. Oh, yeah. Big ones. And, and I, I get was... it, but I, I'm not that, not that I'm an actor, but to me, it, it was important to get something down. Yes, definitely. That you could build on. But a lot of people are being left out of that equation. And I understand that. Probably I was at a big uh, uh, event at the Palladium, like, I don't know, four nights ago, four or five nights ago, uh, where the negotiating committee and president of SAG and everybody were talking to membership, whoever showed up. Yeah. And they they opened it to questions. And we ended up going three hours longer than they planned wow. because every question was questioning the AI issue. And they were all very, very concerned. And so I don't know what the majority thinks at this point. Uh, the Guess board, we'll find out. We will. The board voted 87% in favor of the contract. So that is indicative of 
a small schism and we'll see how large the membership schism is. But I don't know, whatever, that's boring talk, sorry. Yeah, no, but it's important. And I, I, I just as fans, you know, we're anxiously awaiting because yeah. it's it's starting to get to the point where we had run out of program. Oh, yeah. You know, to watch. Even though there's so much out there. I mean, it went on for what, five months or so? Uh, five, six months. Yeah. With yeah. the writers, I think it was six months and we joined them after. Well, we were there with them for the first two months. So I think for us, it was four months. I forget the 118 days. I had planned oh. to go when we were in L.A., I'd planned to go out to the picket lines and, and hang mm -hmm. out with some friends there with that. And that day it was 110 degrees. Oh, yeah. And I was like, no, thank you. It was around that time, I think, that, that the SAG and the writers decided, let's only pick it between 9 and 12. Yeah. They stopped at noon from that point on. I remember that. Yes, they should. Oh. That's miserable. Stand yeah. on concrete. I always I always went over to Netflix because it's close to me, but also because half of the walk was in shade. It's like you'd be on this side and you'd be sunny, then you'd be in shade, shade, awesome. shade. Sunny, sunny, shade, shade. That was it. That's why I told my buddies. I'm like, I'm, I'm supportive. Maybe but not. God that damn. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I didn't go as much as I wanted because the heat was really off-putting, and I'm not an early riser, so it was, it was, a, it was. A, but I was there quite often. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Ezra, thank you so much, and You're and great. appreciate the time, and and hopefully at some point we get to do something in person. Oh, that'd be great. I would love that. Come to LA, you, me, and Lisa. We'll go hang at some of my favorite hangs. And we we'll have to. It'll be fun. Yeah. All right. Hold on a second. Hit the pause. That was a fun one for me, Ezra Buzzington. Uh, I'm such a, a fan of his. I've been really blessed. I've got uh, a nice group of entertainment friends in L.A., and Lisa Hamill is uh, one of the best ones, and she's good friends with Ezra and helps set this interview up. I'm very grateful, so thank you, um, Lisa. And I talked to we, Ezra. He's done so much. There's so much. Talked to almost. I can't believe I almost forgot uh, Crossbones. But just some of the other ones that we didn't quite uh, get to. You know, he was the uh, kind of hawker in uh, the Prestige. I thought he was so terrific in that. It had kind of a like a Cockney British accent, and he was so good at it. So now that I know that he's from uh, Indiana, that that's that's pretty impressive. Uh, loved him in Art School Confidential. I, Pretty sure he was the model in that one. It's been a while since I've seen it. Um, he was the typing teacher and secretary, which, if I remember correctly, I read a story where um, his use of the ruler in that scene was kind of his idea that he thought it might uh, be good foreshadowing for um, James and Maggie's scene later with the uh the ruler so i thought that was kind of interesting he uh played uh he had a role in me myself and irene that that was really good he was an inspector in the fight club oh i can't believe i didn't bring up the fact that he played uh howard west you know jerry west from cabin creek here in west virginia that's our boy uh he got to play uh howard west on winning time the rise of the lakers uh dynasty which i know has caused some consternation with uh uh, Jerry West about the way he's portrayed, but Ezra got to play uh, Howard in an episode, so pretty uh, pretty great. He was uh, Doctor uh, Bertrand on uh, Doom Patrol. He played uh, Wayne on The Middle, and he was in, he played uh, uh, just had an episode of it, but he was on this show called Enlisted that I actually thought was a really good show. It didn't didn't make it uh, after a year. It was about um, about the army, and he played a private uh, in an episode of that. Um, and also appeared in several episodes of Justified, which I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, Justified. Um, played a uh, highway cop in How I Met Your Mother. So that's just a few. And I'm just barely touching it. He has done a ton of stuff. Just an excellent, excellent actor. Um, really good, really good. So just thrilled to death that we got to... Uh, to do that so i hope hope you enjoyed it as much as i did we'll definitely be bringing ezra back and hopefully we'll be including him with our uh, little group hangouts we uh, we enjoyed that if you're finding us for the first time thank you love to have your support our youtube channel is meistercon pod please subscribe it's free um if you would like to see any of our episodes or listen 
We've got almost 700 of them. All of them are on our website, meistercon.com. So definitely check us out there. And also ask that if you go to imdb.com, pull up the two opinionated page, that would help us out just that traffic on there. Uh, IMDB named us one of its top 100 podcasts, which we're so grateful for. 15 million or so podcasts out there to, to hit a top 100 list is uh, is pretty special. And we definitely appreciate that. Thank you guys so, so much. Till next time. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the Two Opinionated Podcast. Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel, and we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views, but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that thousand was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDB, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast, to be in the top 100 out of 15 million. It's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways though that you can help us and they're free and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free, doesn't cost you anything, really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to imdb, imdb.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast, and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple easy ways that you can support us, even if you're not listening or watching all of the time. And we want you to listen and watch, because I think that our... Our guest list, I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors on there if you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world you know we've got producers directors um video artists anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes we've had them on the show so definitely check us out thank you guys so so much until next time bye everybody <laughs>